country's COVID-19 situation. Let's make sense of the numbers with infectious disease specialist, Dr. Benjamin Ko. Doc, thank you so much for joining us on The Final Word. The Department of Health just said we should not be alarmed. But what is your take? Is this a cause for concern that we're now in the top 20? Uh, good evening, Rico, and good evening, everyone. Thanks for the invite. Um, First things first, um, w there should really be a concern that we are in the top 20. I mean, let, let, let's, let's call a spade a spade, that the numbers mm -hmm. are showing that we are, we are way up there. Um, and uh, that means that the other countries um, within Asia, actually, were, were, were all the way up there. So to, to, to even beat Pakistan overnight, um, is a cause for concern. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other, the other, the flip side of the coin is that if you look at all of the 20 countries, um, and I was looking at the New York Times um, data, if you look at all of the 20 countries, they classify the countries as um, high and still with numbers that are increasing, or high with numbers that are decreasing, low with numbers that are increasing mm -hmm. or low with numbers that are continually decreasing. And we are one of five countries that are in the fourth category, which is the good news. I mean, we have, uh, we're able to keep the numbers low and we're going, we have numbers that are continuously decreasing now. And so with the longest lockdown uh, in know. the world, uh, yeah. Doctor, this shouldn't be the case. What does it say about the COVID uh, response of the government? Well, um, the, actually, the other countries never overtook us. Uh, it just so happens that our leaders held us back. So politics and health will always be a heady mix. Uh, so let, 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 let's call it that way. Um, and this is a difficult problem that we, we face because uh, we're, we're way into mm -hmm. um, a problem wherein we, we open the economy a little. So, and we open it little by little nowadays. Now we're getting better numbers and uh, the business sector is, is wanting and they, they, mm -hmm. they really want to just open up the, the, the business community almost immediately. Let's try to look but ahead, see, uh, Dr. Ko. What should be the next step of this government against its fight versus COVID-19? Well, uh, we're, we're in the right direction. It's just that, you know, there are just a couple of things that may not be going our way. Example, uh, all the way back in May, I already said that uh, we, we approach a season wherein we will reach the perfect storm. So if we mm -hmm. don't bring down the numbers very quickly at that time, what's going to happen is that... Um, the, the rainy season and the typhoon season will 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 make this problem even worse. Mm -hmm. uh, example is that the the uh, Pagasa has said that we are approaching or we have started La Nina, and you know when the storm comes, what happens is that um, when when areas get flooded and uh, we need to <clears throat> evacuate people, this adds to the problem of people congesting in one certain area. Right. If yes. you look at our data, most of our data show that it is actually in NCR and in the regions around us that have the most cases. Mm -hmm. If you remove NCR from the equation, that's 50% less already of the cases automatically. So NCR is actually an, uh, the, the area to watch. And uh, Guido was say, uh, Professor Guido from, from the office, the group is right when he says that right. you know in in Metro Manila the number of cases yes. are down and that's mm. the good news that's what you want to see that in these epicenters the number of cases keep yes. going down a lot of factors that contribute to the rising number of COVID-19 infections thank you so much for yes. your insights and happy weekend Dr. Benjamin Ko an infectious disease expert